out of it, Susie. You look like the last bar of the last rose of summer. I'm all right, Elva. You ready to go to work? Well, I will be as soon as I get finished putting on this makeup. Who invented makeup, anyway? I gotta put it on to go out in the street and then take it off and put new stuff on at the theater. Ella? Yeah? Do you think we're ever going to get any place in show business? Well, where do you want to get? You're in the front row of the chorus now, aren't you? So am I. If you got any further front, would be in the orchestra pit. That isn't what I mean. I mean, do you think we'll ever be able to get out of this little apartment and out of the chorus? I'm doing pretty good now with the talents I got. With you, it's different. You're young and cute. You ought to be in pictures, maybe. You really think so? I said ought to be, kid. Ought to be and going to be are two different things. Well, fix this face of mine as good as it'll ever be, I guess. Let's get up. Hey, what's that under the door? It looks like an envelope. I don't know why it should look like an envelope, except for one reason. That's because it is an envelope. I'll get it. One way to keep my girlish figure. Bending for envelopes, people slide under doors. Oh, here, it's addressed to you, Miss Susan Blake. Well, who could be find out the hard way? Open it and see. Ella! Oh, what's the matter, kid? Somebody crawl out of that envelope and slug you? That's the way you sounded. it. Listen to what the note says. It says, unless you pay me $5,000 in cash... In a way I will tell you about tomorrow, you'll be dead by tomorrow night. <gasps> dead by tomorrow night, Ella. Unless I pay somebody five thousand dollars. Five thousand clams. We haven't got five hundred pennies between us. Oh, Susie, somebody's kidding. Oh, they can't be. They could go to jail for writing a note like this. Ella, what are we gonna do? Oh, we can go to the cops, or oh, we can get five thousand dollars somewhere. All I know is we've got to do something. I've got to do something. I'm going to get that You've got to help me. You've helped so many other people. I'll be glad to do what I can, Miss Blake. This note was slipped under your door, and you have no idea who might be trying to get $5,000 from you. No, all I know is it can't be anybody who knows me at all. I haven't any money. All I have is my job in our musical show, The Tip Top Review. I understand. But I don't think I understand your reluctance to go to the police. You say you're afraid that the publicity might be detrimental to you seems to me that show business people relish publicity of this sort. Well, they like publicity, all right, but not this kind. If I had jewels stolen or something like that, it'd be different. But the possibility of a murder isn't good publicity. Maybe they wouldn't like it. I don't want to take a chance and they're not liking it. You understand? Your idea is that I can help you. And if I can, there's no need of your going to the police. That's right. You're a private investigator, the best in the world. Vance, you've got to help me. Let me see that note again. Here. Mm. Unless you pay me $5,000 in cash in a way I'll tell you about tomorrow, you'll be dead by tomorrow night. Do mm. you notice anything strange about this typewriting? No. It's very neatly typed, except that every time the letter Y is used, whoever typed it hit a wrong key first. The Z, I think. And then the Y was typed over it. Hmm. What can that mean? I don't know yet. Tell me one other thing. Is there someone who wants to put you under obligation to him? Someone who wants you to come to him and borrow $5,000? Oh, I see what you're getting at. Maybe there is such a person, Vance, now that you brought it up. Tell me who he is and I'll go see him. No, no, I... I don't think I will. I think it'd be a much better idea if I saw him myself. Hold it. I'm coming. Well, Susie, come on in. Thanks, John. You don't seem surprised that I'm here. I'm not. I 
just called your apartment and your roommate told me she thought you might be coming to see me. Sit down, Susie. Can I get you something? No. Don, would you do something for me? Anything, Susie. I always told you I'd do anything for you if you'd only give me a chance. What's the gimme? I need $5,000. <laughs> Who doesn't? What's the pitch? I need the money desperately, Don. I'll pay it back a little at a time, but I have to have it tonight. Well, we'll have to see what we can do about that. What's the angle? Well, I can't... Oh, don't go away, Susie. I'll get rid of whoever's on the phone. Yeah. That you, Don? Well, yeah, Frankie, only I can't... Listen, Don, this is it. There's a boat race tomorrow. The fourth. Ten. I'll call you back. You can't reach me. Get down with everything. The fourth. Victory. Frankie, you're a fool. Call me back in ten minutes. Now, uh, Susie, where were we? You wanted to know why I needed the money. Now I want to know something. Yeah? What's the question? That, uh, phone call you just got. I think I know what it means. Oh, really? What's the proposition? You know what I want. Five thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Five grand. Well, Susie, I've got a soft spot in my head for you. I always said I'd take care of you. And don't you worry. I will. Attorney Markham speaking. Hello, Markham. This is Vance. How are you, my friend? What's up? I thought perhaps you might be trying to get me in the next half hour for some reason or other, and I just wanted to report to you that I couldn't be reached. Nothing's come up here that'd be interesting to you, Vance? In that case, I'm on my way. Where are you bound for? A girl came to me today, Markham, a Susan Blake. Her life had been threatened, and she has until tomorrow to get the $5,000 whoever wrote the note demanded. But she said she had a call to make after she left me, and I'm going up to her apartment to find out who it was she went to see and what happened there. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help Miss Blake. I will. But if I have to call on the law, Markham, I'm afraid it'll be too late for anybody to help her. Hello up there. You paid me? In a way, my name is Philo Vance, and I'm looking for the apartment of a girl named Susan Blake. Mighty nice looking. I or my quest? Well, brother, let's face facts. You ain't there. Well, thank you. Oh, it ain't me you have to thank. Send a fan letter to your mother, your father, and your tailor. <laughs> I'm Ella Andrews, Susie's roommate. I'm just on my way up to the apartment. Uh, can you make another flight of stairs? Under protest. Well, better make it under your own power. I haven't carried anybody up a flight of stairs since I quit my job as a volunteer fireman. I thought firemen only carried people down. Maybe that's why I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> I heard of you, Van. Susie told me she was going to see you, and I was glad she did. Because of that threatening note she got? Oh, well, because of a lot of things. Mostly a thing named Donald Graham, who's got a yen for Susie a mile long. Graham? Mm, big time operator. What his racket is, I don't know. As long as I want to stay healthy, I don't care about finding out. He called here after Susie left this afternoon. I told him Susie was going to see him. Well, here we are. Mm. This, and don't you dare laugh, is home. Mm. I'll get my key. Seems to me that the door is open. Hmm, seems to me that what seems to you ain't wrong. Susie's probably home. Hey, Susie, you got company. Come on in there. Thank you. Well, Susie's probably in the bedroom. I'll go look. There's a magazine lying over there if you want to read. It's a couple of months old, though. Really? Yeah, my boyfriend's a dentist. <laughs> Be right out, Van. All right, Miss Andrews. Susie probably fell asleep waiting for me to... <gasps> Miss Andrews, what is it? What's the matter? Look, it's... It's me. Poor girl. Oh, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. You don't have to. You better come out here in the living room with me. Apparently, your roommate had a visitor before we got here, Miss Andrews. A visitor named Murder. I'm sorry. 
worry about that Blake girl, Vance. Sergeant Heath and his men will investigate the case thoroughly, believe me. I'm sure they will, Marco. But I wanted you to drive out here with me to see the dead girl's mother. She lives out here in the suburbs, according to the information I have. A little too far out for Miss Blake to commute every day. Yes. The mother's name is Cherney. Susan changed her name when she went on the stage. This ought to be the house, I think. You want me to go in with you? Please. The mother has been informed of the murder. I'll feel better if you're with me. Good enough. A yeah, quaint little house, isn't it? Yes. Something old world about it. I hope we can learn something here, Martin. I certainly do, too. Ring the bell, will you, Vance? Right. I have an idea that talking to the mother might give us a lead as to who might have tried to get $5,000 from a girl who was broke. And who killed her before the time limit he himself set was up. I don't understand that. I don't either. that. But... Do I police? Come in. Thank you, Mrs. Cherney. This is Mr. Markham. My name is Vance. How do you do? Come in. What do you want with me? I'd like to look around the house, if you don't mind, Mrs. Cherney. I don't mind. I don't care. I don't care about anything anymore. We're trying to find the man who killed your daughter, Mrs. Cherney. You'll help us. Suppose you do find him. What good did that do Susan now? What do you want to know? Tell us about Susan. Well, I bring her here many, many years ago from the old country. She was just a baby. Only furniture, you see, everything here comes from the old country. I, I try to make this house just like the one I leave. We understand that. Susan go to school, then to business college. I want her to be secretary. I, I was secretary in old country. For branch office, the American company. We're not farm people. Please go on. Susan seemed to like practicing piano, dancing. I tried to make her typewrite things at home on machine I still have, which I bring from other side. But she go to business college only to please me. Much rather she dance and sing. Uh, who were her friends? Do you know that? No, that I do not know. She... Come home when she gets a chance, but not too often. She was here the day before she was killed. I, I have nothing else to tell you, except Susan was a good girl. Yeah, I'm yes. very sure of that, Mrs. Yes. Jenny. Thank you very much. You're leaving? Yes. You'll hear from us, though. Uh, you too, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Cherney. If you think of anything I ought to know, Mrs. Cherney, please call me on the telephone. I'm in the book. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Goodbye. Well, Vance, I guess that was a wasted visit. Why do you say that, my friend? Well, it's pretty apparent, isn't it? You found out absolutely nothing. What did you expect to find out, Markham? Well, I'd hope to get a lead on whoever it was that wrote that threatening note to Miss Blake. Oh, that note. I know who wrote that note. You do? Mm-hmm. I don't even want to know how you know. Just tell me who it is so we can pick him up. It wouldn't do us any good, Markham. Not yet, that is. Knowing who wrote that note doesn't mean knowing who committed the murder. This is District Attorney Markham. The tip top murder case began with the finding of the body of chorus girl Susan Blake after she had received a typewritten note threatening her with death unless she paid the writer $5,000. Philo Vance says he knows who wrote that note, but insists he is more interested in the identity of the murderer. And right now, he's decided to go over to the Tip Top Review, the musical show which employed Miss Blake and her roommate, Ella Andrews. He should be there about now on account of the number. Now look, you kids. This show's been running for six months, and just because we got a new girl to break in, you're all rehearsing like you got lead in your feet. Now, this is a step you've been missing. Watch me, will you? Okay, Harry. Well, how about it, boys and girls? Can you do it? 
No, we'll see. Take it from the top. Hit it, Harry. Okay, okay, break it. Take five, everybody. Grab your coat, Danny. We'll hop across the street for a couple. Oh, why, Mr. Vance, hello. Hello, Miss Andrews. Mind if I talk to you a minute? Talk to me for five, if you like. We got that much time off from rehearsal. What did you find out about who killed Susie? That's what I came to talk to you about. You told me of a friend of hers named Don Graham. Yeah, that's right, I did. I told you about him when we were climbing the stairs to our apartment. He's a no-good guy if there ever was one. And there was one, I'm told. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm working on a theory, Miss Andrews, and this is what I want to know. Did your roommate, Susan Blake, tell you anything at all about Graham? I know she went to see him. Graham knows I know she went to see him because he called the apartment after Susie called me and told me she was going up there. Mm, that's right. You told me that, too. That's not so good. It isn't. No. Now, look, Miss Andrews, this is serious. Did Susan tell you anything about Graham? Anything at all? Not that I can remember. Why? Why? Because that might save your life. <laughs> Got all the money I could raise on that horse victory in the fourth today, Frankie. You know that. Sure, Don. Like I told you, it's a boat race. Every horse in the fourth is owned by one guy under different names. Mm -hmm. Guy's waiting two years to pull a thing like this, and only three people know it. Him, me, and you. Good. That means the price on the horse victory will stay up. Not too many people will be betting on him. You know why I tried to stop you from telling me about the race on the phone yesterday? I know now... Because that dame Susie was here, that's why. She was here and she heard you. If she figured out what you were saying, and I think she did, she'd spread the story that the horse race was fixed all over town. Sure, sure, I know. And the price would go down and some wrong guy had to hear about the fix and spoil the whole thing. Frankie, I stand to make over a hundred grand on that race. That's too much to risk on a dame's yapping. Well, what's the answer? The answer is I shut up the dame like you told me to. I'll tell you something, Don. It wasn't a bad job. I... Anybody home? Hey, quite the thing, Buster. Oh, well, what do you want here? You know who I am? No, and that's all right with me. What's the pitch? I'm Ella Andrews. I was Susie Blake's roommate. So? So which one of you is Don Graham? I am. Look, Mr. Graham, you've got to believe me. Susie never told me a thing before she was killed. I, I never saw her from the time she left the apartment till the time I found her dead. you got to believe that. What is all this, Don? Who knows? What's the gimmick, Ella? Why come here to tell me this? Well, I wanted you to know. I, you, you've got to know, and you've got to believe me. She never said a word to me. Tell me you believe me. Please tell me. All right, cutie. If it'll make you happy. I believe it. Now get going. Okay. I, I had to be sure you knew that. Only remember it, will you? Yeah. How do you figure that one, Don? Very simple, Frankie. The gal knows something. About the race? What else? I see. The Blake gal took this one out, huh? Only she's scared and wants to make out like she don't know nothing. That's right. Frankie, I think maybe you ought to go visit this young lady. You know where she lives? Yeah, sure. I was there once to see Susie Blake. Remember? Listen to me, see if this isn't your theory, too. This Don Graham you told me about sent the threatening note to Miss Blake, believing that she would run to him for the money which he would give her. And thus put her under obligation to him. Right. He'd send her another note saying to leave the 5000 somewhere, and he'd pick up the money he'd given her, his own money. He lost nothing. That makes sense, Vance. Yes, it does. But it doesn't make a reason for him to kill her, especially as I'm sure Miss Blake did go to see Graham and ask him for the money. Maybe she had something on Graham and reminded him of it when she went there. Maybe she used blackmail as a means of getting the 5000 That's very possible, Markham. But. But what? But that isn't even close to what actually happened. Don't bother, Mrs. Williams. I've got my key. I thought I mislaid it. Mm-hmm. Don't make a sound. 
Come on, turn out those lights. Mr. Fair. Do as I say, Miss Andrews, quickly. Okay, but what is all this, Van? You scared the daylights out of me. I hope you won't be scared again in a few minutes. That's the reason I'm here. You got a reason for getting into my apartment, waiting for me, and asking me to turn out the light? I had a reason and a pass key for getting in. And the lights were a little idea of mine in order to set a stage. Look, I'd like to be a star, and I think I get what you mean about setting a stage, but, Vance, I wouldn't look good as a corpse. Gray isn't my color. Tell me what's going on. You went to see Don Graham, didn't you? Sure, you told me something in the theater that made me go to see him. I had to make sure that Graham knew that Susie didn't tell me anything before she was killed. That's what I thought you'd do, and what I wanted you to do. Well, thanks. It would have been easier if you'd asked me. Easier, perhaps, but not quite as convincing. You'd better make yourself comfortable here, Miss Andrews. I'm quite certain you're going to have a visitor. But I haven't the slightest idea as to when he'll arrive. You still there, Van? Yes, Miss Andrews. The strain of waiting, getting you down. No, but in case you see me walking a back fence tomorrow night, you'll know the reason. My eyes are getting so used to the dark, and here I'm practically a cat. You're a much prettier girl than you would be a cat. Maybe the darkness in here isn't going to be so bad after all. Say that again, will you, Van? Why? Didn't you hear me? Oh, there are some things a girl can't hear often enough. In that case, I... Van's <gasps> door. Where is that darn light switch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Hey, That's Frankie, what are you doing John here? Graham's stooge, Ben. You want to know what I'm doing here, Frankie? What are you two doing here, you and that knife? Right now, I'm waiting to use it on you. Sam, look out. He's throwing that knife. Thanks for the warning, Miss Andrews. Oh, no, Frankie, you're not getting out of here. That's what you think. That's what I know. Okay. Is this the way you want it? Anybody oh. mind if I play, too? Ah! Well, nice work, Miss Andrews. But you really shouldn't have hit him with that vase. I was having quite a bit of fun. Oh, sorry, I spoiled it. I guess maybe I shouldn't have. Because you didn't want to spoil my fun. Don't be silly. That vase I slugged him with cost a dollar ninety-eight. <laughs> that crumb really came up to let me have it, didn't he? Hey, why ain't I screaming? I don't know, but thanks for not doing it. This man is Don Graham's assistant, you said? I said he was Graham's stooge. He killed your roommate on Graham's orders. And I'm quite certain that Mr. Markham can get him to admit that when we take him to headquarters. But who wrote the note asking for five G's, Vance? And why did they think that Susie could get that kind of dough? I'll explain all that to Markham. But you're invited if you care to find out all about this case. Frankie squealed on Don Graham, and you have both of them in custody, so I'll answer all questions from you and Miss Andrews now. I got a question. What are you doing later? I'll answer that later, Miss Andrews. Well, Markham? Uh, who wrote the typewritten note that asked for $5,000? Miss Blake wrote that note herself. What? what? That's right. Markham, do you remember the typewriter at the home of Miss Blake's mother? Uh, no, no. I know she mentioned she had a typewriter. She brought over from her native country, but I didn't see it. I didn't either, but I didn't have to. All I had to know was it was a foreign typewriter with English letters. Remember, Miss Blake's mother said she worked for an American company? Yes. Anyhow, I knew that was the one used to write the note. How did you know that? The note was typed perfectly, except where the letter Y was used. And then, apparently, the typist had hit the letter Z first. A touch typist, such as her mother told us Miss Blake was, wouldn't look at the keys. She'd assume every typewriter had what is known as a standard keyboard. And a foreign machine doesn't have that? Well, it's standard except for one change. The Z and Y keys are transposed on a foreign typewriter. Because the letter Z is used more in foreign words. I get it now, Vance. Miss Blake, schooled on an American machine, would strike the wrong letter if she weren't looking at the keys. She wrote the threatening letter to herself when she was home the day before her death. <laughs> exactly. Now, as to why she wrote the letter... She wanted to take it to Don Graham and ask him for the $5,000. She wanted to use that money for clothes or for a trip to try to get into the movies or something like that. You've got it, Van. She was movie mad, that gal. That's what I suspected. Anyhow, she came to me to make the note seem even more authentic. Then she went to Don Graham's for the money. But unfortunately, she overheard something up there that Graham didn't want made public. We have that in his confession, of course. 
Well, I want to thank you, Vance, for your help. Things certainly started moving when you got in the middle of this situation. All I care about is that we wound up successful at the end of the tip-top murder case.